we needn't have spent any money at all because, in fact, all you need for proper spine-chilling horror is a fireplace, a book, and this man. Good evening. I'm Paul Ross. Are your windows bolted? Are your doors locked? Let's hope so, because I'm about to open my big black book of horror. Yes, Paul Ross's big black book of horror is a terrifying journey into the unknown for Paul Ross. I repeat, Paul Ross, a name that from this point on will be synonymous with timeless horror fiction. Little Chapel Wedding by Kathleen Croft. I had got quite friendly with my new neighbour Janice and had helped her unpack the smaller boxes of belongings after she'd moved in. TV doesn't come much cheaper than this. There's only two camera angles and the occasional cutaway shot just to liven things up. I was sitting on the verge of the A426. But largely it's just Paul Ross reading from a book in the style of, well, in the style of Paul Ross. I'm desperate to know more, but I don't want to pressure her. If you don't want to talk about it, just tell me to shut up. No, it's all right. I don't mind you asking. I didn't want to bore you with it. You must think I've lost the plot. Don't be stupid. Why would I think that? I say reading. Actually, he only glances at the book a couple of times every half hour. Luckily, none of that manages to detract from the panorama of raw, blood-curdling horror he manages to conjure up. Oh, my God, I whispered. The place is haunted. I watch the glide to the door and disappear through it, just like they do in films. The level of detail is stunning. You know that because of Darren's night shift starting this week, I stopped over and brought the kids back myself to save Darren the journey up and down on Sunday evening? Yes, you stayed in that little bed and breakfast on the Mumbles, the one Harry and I and the kids went to last year. Well, on the Saturday morning, I walked round the village, but there was nothing much open. The seaside doesn't have a lot going for it in late October. There's even more detail when it comes to describing the clothes. Yes. And the ladies were all wearing little hats tilted forwards over one eye, and their dresses were knee length in a sort of flowery silk crepe de chine. And oh, you should have seen their shoes. But I can't see them paint a picture with words, Paul. Cuban heels, very heavy and sensible. They all wore white gloves and carried little pouch handbags. What about the bridesmaids? Just one bridesmaid wearing a very shabby puff sleeve dress in turquoise taffeta. The skirt had a narrow band of ruche inset just above the frilled hemline. I think this story was written by Gok Wan. The story seemed to have a lot of common themes. For instance, most of the time, Ross is playing a woman, which I warn you, can be powerfully erotic. To a girl raised in a neat little pre-war semi, 1589 East Willow Street, Cedar Bend, Iowa, was a dream come true. Oh, Mac, I sighed as we stepped over the threshold. Yeah? You're crazy about it, aren't you? I nodded and hurled myself into his arms. Then what? We'd better make an offer then, he said, and kiss me slowly and thoroughly. Oh, don't stop talking, Paul. And of course, like all good horror stories, they build to a truly terrifying climax. This experience has made me realise how much I still love Darren and that I should never have left him. So I rang him last night to see if he feels the same, and he does. The long and short of all this is, I'm going back to Wales, to Darren. More from my big black book of horror after this. Anyway, God knows what they were thinking when they made this. I mean, seriously, who the hell's going to tune in just to watch some unattractive, increasingly paunchy and irrelevant TV presenter just sitting around on his own in his house, just talking and talking and talking?